Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to have a look on the 5 important questions that were asked for September 2020 NDA UGC net from romantic period that comes under British literature. So why are we technically looking at this is because you would get an idea about what are the important areas that you have to cover while you are preparing for NTA net exam and also you would get an idea about what are the different perspectives or what are the different angles in which a author comes under question. So we all know about romantic age, we have covered almost all the uh, writers of romantic age and we have discussed about Wordsworth, Coleridge, Byron, Shelley, Keats and then we also have discussed about the essays like Quincy, uh, Lump, then we moved on to the other fiction writers like um, Jane Austen, Mary Shelley, Walter Scott etc. So you, you have to remember, you have to learn, you have to prepare almost all the writers who belong to romantic period because romantic age and Victorian age both of them are very important from net point of view. So today while we are discussing these questions you will get an idea about what you have to look from a particular author or what are the common areas in which questions are asked for NTA net exam. So, the first important writer that was asked for September 2020 exam was Lord Byron and this might actually change. Sometimes it would be William Wordsworth, sometimes it would be Coleridge because every writer who belonged to this romantic period are equally important but for September 2020 it was Lord Byron and two questions were asked from Lord Byron. Okay, similarly, we, um, when we look at Victorian age, it was Robert Browning. Robert Browning was asked for twice in the previous exam. So, when you study for NTA net exam, when you prepare for it, you have to be very precise about such important writers because Romantic age and Victorian age, both the periods, they have got very limited writers and therefore, you have to give importance to almost every writer and that too equally. So, the first writer that was asked for the previous exam was Lord Byron. Lord Byron, he was born in the year 1788 and died in the year 1824. So, about Lord Byron, we have uh, covered the important poems and also the important criticisms related to Byron in our videos. So, if you have any doubts, please go to that and have a look. So, I am not explaining it uh, again. But here one important thing or these are some important facts that you have to remember about the biographical details of Lord Byron. That is Byron who is also known as George Gordon Byron, the 6th Baron Byron. He was a poet, peer and politician and he became a revolutionary in the Greek war of independence. So we might be very familiar with the terms Byronic hero because Byron and his characters they have got a negative shade but they are loved by the people. They are embraced by the people in, uh, in spite of their, despite of their uh, negativities. So that is what we call as a Byronic hero. For example, we call Lucifer of Paradise Lost as a Byronic hero. We call Heathcliff of Wuthering Heights as a Byronic hero. So he uh, became a revolutionary in the Greek War of Independence. And he is also considered to be one of the leading figures of the Romantic movement. So he continued the path of Alexander Pope in his criticism and satire. So Byron is a very prominent writer, a poet and also a revolutionary figure in the Romantic period. He had a tormented childhood where his father deserted his mother after abducting her fortune and he and his mother they were taken care by their, un by their uncle and that is how he got the title Lord. Okay, he inherited the title Lord or he was called as Lord Byron uh, from his uncle and he was influenced by Old Testament and Pope's work. Okay, he was highly influenced by uh, Old Testament of Bible and also Alexander Pope's work and he also continued the Pope's criticism and satire in his English, Scots and um, Spanish uh, reviews. So he left England in 1816 and went to Italy and he got associated with Shelley. So even in the writings of Shelley and Mary Shelley, we could find that there was a great influence of uh, Byron and even Byron was also influenced by Shelley and Mary Shelley and Mary Shelley also shared a very great bond with Lord Byron. 
and he died of fever before he could participate in the battle so though he was a very revolutionary figure who had inspired many he couldn't participate in the battle because he died uh, with he died of fever before the battle so these are certain biographical details that you have to remember while you are preparing for uh, NTA net exam so remember if you take a writer that belongs to the romantic age at first you have to give importance to the biographical details then you have to move on to the important works important poems or important works written by that particular author and how it is related to the other works so these would be the areas that you have to give your concern while you are preparing for NTA net exam so coming to the questions there were two questions that were asked from lord byron in september 2020 the first one was who among the following rod mazepa a long narrative poem about a 17th century military leader of ukraine okay who among the following rod mazepa a long narrative poem about a 17th century military leader of ukraine so the options are william cowper lord byron pb shelley and samuel taylor coleridge so the answer is lord byron and uh, about mazepa Mazepa is actually a narrative poem written by Byron in 1890. Okay, when we are discussing about Byron and Mazepa, it is not necessary that these questions would be, uh, would be asking for the net exam. But I want you to have a clear cut idea about the ways in which the different questions can be asked for an NTA exam because Mazepa is just one of the other important poems of Lord Byron. So Byron has got many other poems under his credit like Don Juan etc. or The Prisoner of Chillon. and so so mazepa is just one such poem but you have to remember all the poems and all the works of the romantic periods uh, of the romantic poets if you are preparing for it so mazepa it is a narrative poem and it is about a uh, about a popular legend on the life of ivan mazepa so this is ivan mazepa he later became a military leader of ukraine so this tells a story of mazepa so mazepa the work is written by uh lord byron so while we deal with mazepa just uh, look at the story of mazepa so the mazepa he got into an affair with teresa who was a polish countess and uh, she was uh, married and therefore he had to face the punishment and as a result uh, the count punishes him by tying him naked to a wild horse and setting the horse loose so the rest of the poem it describes about the traumatic experience that mazepa had on this horse okay so this is technically the story of mazepa so as i said earlier why if you uh, take an author look at his look at his biographical details then go on for the important poems written by him and also try to get to know about some of the plot that that uh, is that concerns the particular work and another important thing that you have to remember about mazepa is that mazepa was published along with another poem called another work called as the fragment of a novel okay fragment of a novel it was one of the earliest vampire stories in english and the poem ode okay so remember mazepa it was published as a book or as an anthology along with two other works one was the fragment of a novel okay and another one was the ode and i'm uh, telling this point is because the next question that was asked for september 2020 was about this point who is the author of a fragment one of the earliest vampire stories in english okay so the answer is lord byron so you have to remember that these two questions they are actually connected so the one who studies mazepa will also get to know about this work called a fragment because mazepa and fragment they were published together along with another work called an ode as a, as an as an anthology or as a complete work okay so when you look at a particular poem also try to look at what are the important facts that you can find from that particular book apart from its plot or apart from its themes okay so that is also very important so these were the two questions that were asked from lord byron so i am repeating it when i say these were the questions that were asked from lord byron it doesn't necessarily mean that this questions have a repeatable value that it will ask for the net exam no that's not the case but this is the way in which you have to look at a particular author his particular works and also the other references of this particular work you also have to look at intertextuality while you are dealing with uh, such writers 
Then another question that was asked in September 2020 was a match the following question. Okay, so this is again as I said earlier, uh, all the writers of the Romantic period and Victorian period they have got equal importance. Okay, so here with these questions they managed to cover almost four writers. Okay, John Keats, William Wordsworth, P. B. Shelley, and William Blake. So he covered almost all the I mean, almost four authors in a single question. And you also have to, that's why I said you have to remember almost all the poems, even the names of the poems of the writers. Okay, because all these songs, Elastor, Songs of Experience, Comic, The Excursion, they are not the magnum opus of these writers, but they are equally important works. So you have to remember, you cannot skip any of any works. But you have to remember even the names of the writings or the, or the poems or the essays of the romantic writers. So John Keats, William Wordsworth, P.B. Shelley, William Blake and the list are Alastair, Songs of Experience, Comic and The Excursion. So after looking at these works, we will return back to the question. So Alastair, Alastair, the subtitle is The Spirit of Solitude. It is written by P.B. Shelley. So remember Alastair. The subtitle is The Spirit of Solitude. It was published by, I mean, it was written by P.B. Shelley. So, when you look at this particular poem, Alastor, you have to look at the subtitle, you have to look who has written it because we know that uh, when 2018, when NTA revised the syllabus, the, the syllabus actually changed to uh, fiction, poetry, drama, short stories and non-fiction. So, these are all the works that belong to the second module that is poetry. Okay, so this would get much more importance. So, Alastor by P.B. Shelley and another important thing that you have to remember about Alastor is that this book was actually given to his uh, Shelley's friend Peacock. Thomas Love Peacock and Alastor was the name given by Peacock and the title comes from Roman mythology. The second work is Songs of Experience. Okay, Songs of Experience. It is a poetry collection of 26 poems forming the second part of William Blake's Songs of Innocence and of Experience. So, well, while we discussed about William Blake, I have already covered Songs of Innocence, Songs of Experience and even the most important poems that comes under both the works. So, if you are familiar with William Blake, it wouldn't be a tough question because Songs of Innocence was the first part which has the poems like The Lamp which was followed by Songs of Experience that has the poem like like the little girl lost, the little girl found, the chimney sweepers, the tiger, etc. Okay, so songs of experience was by William Blake. The next one is excursion. Excursion was a subtitle of uh, excursion. The subtitle is being a portion of the recluse a poem. So we all know about recluse. Recluse was actually the philosophical autobiograph philosophical autobiographical poem written by William Wordsworth, which was left uncompleted. So the excursion was actually the second part, or it was intended to be the second part of the recluse. So we know about the recluse. Its first part being the prelude, and then about the excursion, and then the second part being the um, Sorry, the recluse and the second part being the excursion. So, these are the uh, writings. So, I think with this knowledge, you would be able to answer the question. So, John Keats, John Keats, William Wordsworth, P.B. Shelley and William Blake. So, John Keats, he had written the work comic. Then William Wordsworth, he goes for uh, the excursion. P.B. Shelley, Alastor, William Blake, Songs of Experience. So, that is the correct order. So the answer is option B. Moving on to the next question that is which two of the following are the titles of the sections in Thomas De Quincey's The English Male Coach. Okay, so as I said earlier, the English male quiz, the students normally have a tendency to skip such uh, works while giving importance to the main works or the major or the most famed works of such writers. But for the last exam, you can find that the questions were not from the most famous works of a particular writer, but from the works that, that actually had the importance but were not that famous. Okay. 
So uh, the question was from Thomas De Quincey's The English Male Coach and there you have to identify the titles of this section. So this work The English Male Coach is known for being divided into three sections. So remember you have to go deep into a particular work in order to answer this question. So this is technically regarded to be a very hard question that came for the uh, last exam but still if you have got a little idea about this English Male Coach then you could easily answer this question. So the glory of mobility, the vision of sudden death, the glory of motion and the vision of unexpected truth. So when you take Quincy and the English male coach then you have to know that English male coach is an essay written by the English author Thomas De Quincy and the essay is divided into three sections. So again we are expecting these questions, not the same questions but we are expecting the questions with the same pattern again for the next exam because as I said when NTA revised the syllabus there was this module called short stories and non-fiction. So the non-fiction it includes essay and obviously the essays would get some extra weightage for the net exam. Exam. So, you have to give focus to essays apart from all the poems and other writings. So, this English male coach, the essay is divided into three sections. So, these are the three sessions the glory of motion, the vision of sudden death, and uh, dream fugue, and founded on the preceding theme of sudden death. So, these are the three topics the glory of motion, the vision of sudden death, and dream fugue, founded on the preceding theme of sudden death. So, the only option that here you could find is that the vision of unexpected truth. So, the answer. So, the answer is A and B only, A and D only, B and C only, B and D only. So, the answer is option C and option C is B and C only. The vision of sudden death and the glory of motion. Okay, and then in September 2020, there was another question. As mentioned in my first acquaintance with poets, which poet does William Hasley describe as the only person I ever knew who answered the idea of a man of genius? So, we have discussed this question while we were dealing with the criticism of romantic age. But uh, I am actually, I have added this question again in this video is because I want you to know that you have to give extreme importance to this non-fiction works because there were many questions that were asked from this particular genre, non-fiction and short stories. So you have to give more focus to it. So as we all know, William Hazlitt's My First Acquaintance with Poets is about his uh, dealings or about the first encounter he had with Coleridge and obviously the answer is Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So the answer is option A. So that's all for today's video and uh, once again I'm telling you I have we have discussed this five important questions that were asked from romantic age because I want you to get an idea about how, how you have to prepare for your NTA net exam. So we have covered every topics that were asked for the previous exam in our LMS platform. So all the students go through that you have to give importance to each and every writer because as I said earlier Lord Byron he was asked twice for the previous exam. So any writer could be asked like that. Okay, so you have to give equal importance and these are the areas that you should give your focus while you are preparing for your exam. So that's all for today. Thank you.